listeners and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. We'd like to extend to you and to your entire family. here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible School. At 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning. And our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come and sit down, study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986 and we'll register you today. In other announcements, our Midwest uh, Strengthening the Families uh, series uh, will continue uh, this coming uh, Saturday, August the 25th, uh, we will be uh, dealing with grandparenting. Where does God? Where does God have grandparents in the scheme of things? Uh, we're going to talk about that, and we hope that you will uh, come and be a part um, of the. Uh, um, uh, the, the workshops and uh, we're going to be dealing with what are your rights as a grandparent? What rights does, a, does grandparents have according to the laws of Kentucky? Kentucky is one of a few uh, states that do have a very pro uh, a progressive uh, r uh, laws and, and support for uh, grandparents. Uh, Kentucky is one of the uh, leading states that where grandparents are raising their children and so we want the uh, raising their grandchildren that is and uh, we we want you to come and listen and hear what can be done to support uh, children who are being raised by their grandparents so you make sure you come out uh, starting at 9 in the morning, uh, we'll have lunch together, and then we will um, uh, we will have a, um, um, an afternoon panel discussion. So you come and be with us, and um, let's talk about these things, and let's see if we can help grandparents be the grandparents God wants them to be, and uh, support those who are having to play the roles of both grandparent and uh, parent. So, God bless you. We hope that you'll come out on the 25th. The Southwestern Christian College uh, plan now to attend the annual Southwestern Christian College fundraiser on Saturday, October the 27th, uh, 5 p.m. at the Midwest Family Life Center. Requested donations are $40, uh, are 70, uh, for each person are $70 for couples. You can expect an evening of Christian fellowship, music, and great fun. Uh, see Midwest, you see Sister Deborah McGill um, for um, uh, information and uh, uh, reserve your seat. Um, so if you want to make a deposit, you can do that, and, and 
but certainly let's get in and let's do that. Let's do that now. Praise be unto God. The Fishers of Men class, 2018. Midwest will hold another Fishers of Men's class starting Monday, September the 18th at 6 p.m. The Fishers of Men's class is an outstanding evangelism training ministry, and uh, you will be um, glad that you uh, um, participated in this um, uh, training your biblical knowledge will grow tremendously. And if you have not taken the Fishers of Men's class, let me urge you, let me urge you to take the Fishers of Men's class and uh, you'll be blessed. So praise be unto God. See Brother Joe Stevenson for any uh, details that you would need to have. In um, area-wide news, uh, uh, you, today is the um, day uh, uh, that uh, JCPS is, uh, is opening and uh, 100,000 students will be going back to school. And we pray that parents, you're getting your students ready and grandparents getting them ready um, and then, and we want to urge you to begin uh, applying for the Village Learning Center's uh, uh, after-school uh, ministry uh, that uh, you can start registering the children uh, next Monday. And uh, we want to urge you to, to get that, get those children registered now. Seats are going to be limited. Uh, and so... It's important that you get registered uh, now. The Kingsley Terrace Church of Christ will be having their singles uh, uh, ministry sem uh, seminar uh, coming up this Saturday, August the 18th. We want to urge uh, our, our singles to uh, get involved with uh, the singles ministry there in, in Indianapolis. The registration starts at 9 a.m. and the program, um, uh, the, the registration starts at 8 a.m. and the program goes from 9 until 4 p.m. Also, the Newburg Church of Christ Ladies' Day is Saturday, uh, September the 8th. Uh, registration starts at 9 a.m. And the program starts at 9.30. The theme, uh, Christian Women at War. Sister Jasmine uh, Moore is the speaker. The Gray Road Church of Christ uh, is having their youth explosion uh, on August, Saturday, August the 8th. We hope, trust, and pray that um, um, uh, there, those in the area can go and participate. May God be with you, and may he keep you real good. Praise be unto God. Now let's remember our sick and shut-in. Want to remember um, our sick um, Sister Beverly Bledsoe, uh, Sister Bertha Frazier, uh, Sister Don Marie Sizemore, uh, Sister um, uh, 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 Jacqueline Hallman. Keep these in our prayers. Uh, we hope, Sister Jaquay, we want you to get stronger and stronger. Uh, let the Lord uh, keep you going and keeping you stronger, and our prayers go out to you. Also for brothers Dean Chandler, brother Johnny Miles, and brother Angelo Pendergrast, and brother David Wilson, continue uh, to pray for our shut-ins. Um, Sister Mamie Cartwright, uh, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, 
Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Vivian Wakefield, Sister Mary Wood, pray for Brother James Fraser. Also pray for those going through the dialysis and other training, other treatments. I uh, want to pray for our good friends, Sister Jesse Bennett, Sister Darlene Hayes, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, and uh, uh, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler there in Evansville. Pray for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw. Brother Dennis Reynolds, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, uh, Brother Frederick Hines, and my oldest brother, Marvin Stevenson, Jr. So God bless you and God uh, be with you. We want to keep um, our dear friend, Sister Rita Kamishi, in prayer. Uh, she is going through some serious uh, health issues, testing this week. We want to continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for Brother Earl Fleetwood in his travels uh, to and from Iowa uh, and uh, his family that is experiencing uh, the death of a child in that, uh, in that family. So our prayers go out to, to them and may our God be, be with uh, all of them. But I want to pray, pray God for all of those who are listening to the morning meditation with God. Uh, radio ministry. Would you bow with me? Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God and Father in heaven, as we come before you and uh, we praise your name, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you be merciful to us, knowing, O oh God, that you are the God who loves us and the Father who cares. And I thank you for that, and I praise your name because there's no other name given in heaven or in earth whereby men can be saved. It is through your gracious name, Jesus, that we come and we bow our heads and worship you. And so, Lord, thank you. And, Father, uh, we ask now that you would allow your mercy to go with those who are sick among thy people. Go with us, O oh God, and help us, every person, our sick and shut in, and uh, those going through dialysis and other treatments. Lord, please, O oh God, please be with them. And I ask for your grace. Lord, we recognize that everything we have, every person that we are, if there's any good in us, it is all because of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for every person, every family, every workplace, automobile that may be driving and listening to the morning meditation with God. Would you please, would you please watch over them? Give them safety. Give them their, your peace throughout this day. Help us to live according to your will, O oh God. And may you bless the efforts of all that we do for the good of the kingdom. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, let's open up our Bibles the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it's in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, 
and our sinners and the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain, right, obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now let's open up our Bibles to the book of Romans, the third chapter. And the verse is 22 through and through 26. The Bible, the word of God says, that is God's righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe since there is no destruction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God presented himself as a propitiation through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness so that he would be righteous and declare righteous the one who has faith in Jesus. Wednesday, August the 15th, 2000 and. Uh, uh, 18, our daily devotion entitled Victory Over Sin. Because of sin, Adam and Eve fell short of the protection God intended for them. Because of sin, the Israelites, the Israelites relinquished the glory they could have, have experienced as God's holy nation. Because of sin, Judas fell short of the opportunity to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Sin will corrupt every area of your life that it touches. Sin will cause 
your marriage to fall short of the promise it held in the beginning. Sin will cause you to fall short of a parent as a parent, as a church member, as a worshiper, or a friend. Every area of your life is success susceptible to sin's destruction. The wonder of salvation is that God completely dealt with sin. He did what we could not do. Through Christ's sacrifice, God, by his grace, offered his salvation and canceled the penalty of our sin. By his grace, he takes a life that has fallen short of God's best and gives it meaning. God provides the opportunity to immediately confess our sin and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. John chapter 1 and verse 9. He made, he mends a broken heart. His grace erases anger and bitterness. He restores severed relationships. He takes a life devastated by sin and makes it whole. He takes our, fa our failures and, and produces something good. Only God, only God can heal sin's devastation. Only God can bridge the gap between his glory and your sin. You must trust him to do so. If you, if you will ask him, he will free you from the bondage of your sin. Reestablish your relationship with him and restore you to wholeness. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. And here... In the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 22 through 26. Now, let's open up our Bibles and let's go back to our featured study found in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 10 through 15. The word of the Lord says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But every man, but every man, take heed how you buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath uh, built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire.
every man, every believer must take heed how he builds upon the foundation of the church. The foundation has been laid and it is strong, strong enough to, to handle anything that is built upon it. It shall never be moved. It is now to be built upon. But everyone in the church, every member, every minister, every person in the church, leaders, must take heed how you build upon it. The scripture says, Jesus was saying to his disciples in Matthew chapter 6, he said, take heed that you do your, do your alms, do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have your reward, your father, uh, your reward, um, have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. And then he says in Matthew 18 and verse 10, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels uh, do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. The, 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 the children have an angel before God every day looking after them and talking to them to the to the Lord about them. So don't 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 try don't try to do what you do anything that is going to discourage uh, uh, the children uh, due to serving the Lord. The Lord is who the Lord is who you need to to be concerned with, and children are a blessing to the Lord. And so he tells you, take heed. Take heed how therefore ye hear, and whatsoever uh, and whosoever hath to him shall be given, and to and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which seemeth he has. My brothers and sisters, God Almighty is looking for the people of God to do the will of God and to build on the foundation that, that the Lord Jesus has built for man. There is no other foundation that can be laid. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the scripture says uh, in uh, verse 11, it says other foundations can foundation and I want you to listen to that now. I want you to get this. No other foundation. Remember now, the Lord is the foundation. And he says there is no foundations. He says for other foundation, singular, can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation. Jesus is the only foundation. All other foundations are sinking sand. They cannot stand against the storms of life. No man, no matter who he is, can lay any other foundation that can last. All other foundations will crumble and will be destroyed. What, uh, what does this mean to say that Christ is the only foundation. The scripture lets us know it means that Christ himself, his person is the only foundation upon which men can build their lives. If you're going to build your life, Buddha can't help you. Oh, the moment, the meditate, the Oprah Winfrey and her meditation, that's not going to 
help you. Uh, uh, Islam, Muhammad is not going to help you. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is the foundation. The Bible says, therefore, uh, Jesus was saying in the Matthew chapter 20, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24, he says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I, like, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. My brothers and sisters, I come to tell you, too many people are building their lives, and in, in essence, they're building their churches upon the sands of this world. Brothers and sisters, get your life anchored base build dig deep uh, until you get to the rock uh, of ages till you dig deep uh, and get down there where god is he's the rock uh, of our salvation he's the rock of our water that we drink upon he's the rock uh, that we sit upon daily he's our rock in a weary land he's our rock uh, that we can carry and not be weary. My brothers and sisters, we've got to recognize that Jesus is the foundation and he's the only foundation. It means uh, that the teaching or the doctrine of Christ is the only foundation upon which man can build their lives. If you are trying to build your life outside of the word of God, then I'm going to tell you, you are building your life upon the sand. My brothers and sisters, Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 34, he, he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. Brothers and sisters, that's why, that's why in the morning meditation with God, I, I try to give you only what thus saith the Lord. I don't, and when I sometimes come into my uh, 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 ways, I, I always tell you, uh, let me have a little folly with you. But uh, but but don't, and you can take my folly all you and, and throw it out the window. But don't throw the word of God out because my brothers and sisters, that's the cornerstone of your life. Jesus said, Jesus said um, in John chapter 6 and verse uh, 63, he says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You want to know, you want to get your, your spirit together in your life? Get it to God. And you know, you know, Jesus had just talked to them about, he said, now, except you eat of my flesh. I'm in John chapter 6 now. He said, I am the bread of life. And he says, except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life. Well, to the Jews, that was cannibalism, and they were ready to stone him. And the Bible says many of them, when he started talking about that, he said many of them walked away and would not uh, uh, follow him any, any longer. That's when he told them, it is, my, it is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. They, they had a fleshly mind. He said, the words were that, that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Then he turned when he, the others walked away from him. He turns to his disciples and says, will you also go away? 
Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. In John, in John chapter 6 and verse 68. My brothers and sisters, the world would be a better place to be when men stop fighting the word of God. When we are allowed once again to bring the word of God back into the public square. You know, that's one of the reasons I respect uh, our governor, Matt Bevan. I, I, I respect him highly because one of the things that he is trying, uh, trying to do in Kentucky is to reintroduce the word of God, the Bible, as a historical influence in the life of, of, uh, of, the, of Kentucky. And, uh, uh, and I pray to God that this, is hap this uh, revolution is happening all over the country. Uh, President Donald Trump uh, is, is uh, taking the, the hammer off of, off of Christianity and allowing us to have the freedom to uh, participate in the public square without being having fear of having our tax exemption taken away from us. My brothers and sisters, there's a revolution taking place in America. And we as a people, uh, we need to celebrate this. We need to celebrate this opportunity, take advantage of it, and lay the foundation of God's word again in our lives. Jesus said, Jesus said this, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words have not, have, have one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have, for I have not spoken of myself, but uh, the father which sent me he gave me a commandment that I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father saith unto me, so I speak. My brothers and sisters, and what God speaks and, and the how Jesus speaks to us today he speaks it through our through the word of God the book we call the Bible God's basic instruction before leaving earth my brothers and sisters it is high time that we bring and work to bring the word of God back into the public square where men can hear the truth of God and not to, amen, and not be in the destruction of sin and the devil. It's time that we lift up the word of God. Men are trying to build their lives on everything except Jesus Christ and his word. It means that Jesus Christ is the only foundation which men can build a, a, a true church. Now, listen now. If you're going to build the church that Jesus built, you've got to build it the way upon the foundation of Jesus. You cannot, you cannot build the church upon anything but Jesus. I come to tell you, you can't build the church on John the Baptist. John the Baptist didn't build a church. Can't build the church on Moses and the, and the Old Testament. Because Moses did not build the church. You can't build it on the wisdom of Solomon. Because Solomon didn't build the church. It was Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You can't get no more than out of that than one than anything else. I don't care what you say. I may lose some of y'all, but I come to tell you, Jesus built the church and he built it, amen, on himself. He didn't build it on Peter, Roman Catholic Church. Peter was not the first pope. He was the apostle, just like the other 12 were apostles in 13 with Paul. I come to tell you, Peter he was given the keys to the kingdom and they preached it on the day of Pentecost. But the 
church was not built upon Peter. He is not the first pope. He was not the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. My brothers and sisters, we've got to know and build it upon Jesus. Jesus said, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 11, the Bible says, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. If you're going to, if you're going to uh, uh, be in a church, Get in the church that Jesus built. Now, all I want you to do, and you know, it's time. It's time for folk to embrace what Jesus has done. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the Bible tells us that the church that he built was on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly joined together groweth unto a holy temple of the Lord. When we come together as the body of, as the people of God, we come together as the the body of Christ, the church of Christ. When we speak of the body, we also speak of the church. For the body is the church and the church is the body. My brothers and sisters, you can't get no more than, you. you, you if you miss that, it's only because you, you have closed your eyes to the truth. In the book of 1 Corinthians, in the book of 1 Corinthians. And you know, I learned, I learned many years ago, a, a man that will not believe one scripture, if you can give him a thousand, he won't, he won't do it. He says, for the body, for as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body also in Christ. Now, he says there is one body, and all, um, even though we got many members, there's only one body. So what we have to do is find out what 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 makes what is that one body, and see, and that's where you gotta go and and use line upon line, here a little, there a little, in the book of Ephesians, chapter one, and verse uh, twenty-two and three. Here's what it says. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. So here, the, and it says, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Here we see now that the body is the church, and the church is the body. My brothers and sisters, you... You have to work hard. You have to be blind not to be able to understand that. Be careful. Beware of how you build upon the foundation. My brothers and sisters, the foundation, the foundation has to be laid, built upon. It has already been laid by Jesus Christ. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. You know, he didn't say church is. His church. The church of Christ. That's what God did. Now, listen, listen. That's, I know this is tough teaching to some that want to puzzle. Well, what about all these denominational churches? Well, 
Remember, that's what divided Corinth. They were over there talking about, well, I'm a Peter, I'm a Paul, I'm a Apollos. Some said, I'm of Christ. He asked, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified? Was Peter crucified? Was Apollos crucified? Who was crucified for you? Was Solomon crucified for you? Was John the Baptist, the Baptist religion? Was, was, they, was he, was he, uh, uh, the, the, was Peter Catholics? Did Peter die for 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 uh, uh, for you? Hmm? No, 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 no. It was Jesus. And if you build, if you try to build uh, uh, on the foundation of the Church of Christ, then you have to be like Christ. God bless you. That's enough for today. That's enough. Pray over that. Pray over the rec the receipt of God's word. Because I'm praying that I give it to you in love. That I speak the truth in love. But I ask the question, do the I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. God loves you, and so do I. I'm going to open up the prayer lines. And if you would like to have prayer, you give us a call. You give us a call. Thank you all for listening and being a part of the morning meditation. Uh, morning meditation, a good friend of mine from... Uh, Jeffersonville, uh, Bob Caldwell has joined uh, has joined us this week, and I want you all to welcome Bob Ca uh, Caldwell. Uh, let's remember Sister Rita Kamishi uh, for her health, uh, uh, praying that God will give her uh, uh, good health reports this week, and uh, Brother Earl Fleetwood, uh, uh, he'll get uh, have a safe uh, journey there. The last time, two times, Brother Fleetwood has gone to, drove to Iowa. He has uh, had uh, accidents, and we pray to God that he'll have a safe journey there and, and back. The school has started, and we want to make sure that everybody keeps an eye on our children and the neighborhoods as the buses come and uh, watch out for bad people who are do harm to our children and so let's keep that uh, uh, let's keep that uh, um, uh, eye out to uh, be do dil due diligence uh, with our with our children uh, and let's pray that uh, they'll get a great education this year that there'll be some improvements uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, things are just getting out of hand and and our prayers are that we're going to we're going to see the improvement of our children's education. Uh, it is high time. It is high time that we change that system and and get it over. Bring children back into the neighborhoods. That's that's what's going to solve this problem. One of the ways that's going to solve this problem. Uh, stop busting the children and bust the and, and assign the, 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 the teachers and, and staff. The only ones that are getting bust and assigned are the children. Now let's assign teachers, bring the children into the neighborhood. Put them buses, uh, uh, put 75% of those buses down and, and let, let's get our children back in our neighborhoods. That's, that's, going, to be, that's going to be the key. Get them, get them back in the neighborhood. So we can feel them and touch them. Five seven one twelve forty. If you would like to have prayer this morning, you give us a call. We'll pray together. We'll call upon our God. Again, I want to urge you to make plans. Oh, we're getting a great, we're getting a great workshop about our parents. We're getting a, a workshop with our parents uh, uh, coming up and. Oh, we're looking forward to that, and we hope, trust, and pray that uh, you are going to be a part of that uh, uh, workshop on the 25th. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to learn some things, you're going to learn some things about grandparenting. Um, uh, you're going to know what your rights are, okay, as a grandparent. You're going to know what kind of support's out here for you as a grandparent. 
Um, one of the things that the Bevan administration is doing, it is really bringing home. They, they heard many of us pastors talking to them about what is going on in our communities where grandparents are, are raising many grandparents. Kentucky has the highest number of grandparents raising their grandchildren in the whole United States of America. Y'all didn't know that, did you? You're going to know a whole lot more when you come out on the 25th. That's going to be a powerful day for you. And I pray to God that you will be here to go with us in that workshop. You're going to be blessed. Praise be unto God. 571-1240. 571-1240. Uh, if you have a prayer request, you give us a call. and We'll pray with you and we'll pray for you. Um, we met last week and our, um, uh, our, our marriage uh, weekend will be the first uh, Saturday in uh, October. And uh, we hope that uh, you will, uh, all married persons will be uh, planning on attending uh, this marriage uh, uh, panel and workshop that will take place um, on that day. So God bless you. We know, we know God's able. We know God is able. So if you would like to um, uh, come, make sure that you do that. But pray no matter what. Make sure you pray. Pray over this and pray over the Strengthening the Family series. Um, And uh, let's continue to pray. Would you bow with me? Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God and Father in heaven, as we come again, we bow our heads this morning, O oh God, and we ask for your grace and your mercy. We pray that you, O oh God, will be with us and allow your word to go out and be with those that are trying to build their lives and all of us we need to build upon the rock of ages. I pray, Father, for our sick and I pray for our shut-in. I pray that you be with Sister Rita Kamishi and Brother Fleetwood. Uh, be with, uh, oh God, all of those. Uh, uh, Brother Larry Willingham, I pray for him. Uh, Sister Jackie, Jackie Holman, she is uh, going to her medical medical attention this week. I pray for these, oh God, and I pray for our children, all of the children that are going back to school today, all over this city and metro area. May you bless them and keep them safe, oh God. I put all things in the name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you. I look forward to being with you again uh, on uh, tomorrow. Until then, know this, our God loves you, and so do I.